video, I made 1000 AI soldiers fight each other following the suggestions that you left in the comments under previous videos. The results turned out much better than I expected, so stay tuned for the 6th episode of Epic AI Wars. Alright, first things first. You might be wondering how exactly is the AI going to learn how to fight? Our soldiers are using a reinforcement learning algorithm called Proximal Policy Optimization, or shortened PPO. Despite making me feel smart whenever I mention this name, the idea behind it is quite simple. The AI will be attempting different actions in the environment and will be rewarded for the correct ones, such as unaliving an enemy for example, while being punished for the wrong ones, such as being unalived, or even existing, but more on that later. The agent will then try to maximize the amount of rewards it gets and minimize the amount of punishments, which in theory should then allow the agents to come up with strategies able to solve the task, uh, or the amount of punishment will completely break the agent's spirit and motivation. Anyways, our first patient for today is going to be Musketeer. Musketeers are able to move in any desired direction, such as forward, backwards, left, right, and even horizon... <clears throat> I mean diagonally. Thanks for reminding me how dumb I am. The musketeer is also able to rotate left and right, which allows him to aim his musket, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <clears throat> in order to see, the agent will shoot a set of lasers, called raycasts, in different directions. When such a ray collides with an obstacle, such as a wall or another soldier, it will return the tag of the object and the distance towards it. This basically serves as the agent's eyes. Well, actually the agent will shoot two sets of raycasts, one detecting allies and the other one detecting enemies, such that soldiers in the back lines do not have their vision obstructed by their teammates. Once the target is locked, the musketeer can <laughs> fire his musket, dealing damage to the enemies in front, followed by a reload during which the musketeer is unable to move, thus placing him in a vulnerable position. One of the first suggestions I have implemented, and soon you'll see why, was from Axis, and it reads, for musketeers, the punishment for friendly fire needs to be harsher. Say no more, I gotcha. I always said, if punishing doesn't work, just add more punishment. So I increased the value by about 3 times. Next idea came from FloresDev, suggesting to have some aim functionality that will allow the musketeers to be more precise. And while the offered solution is not really feasible due to some unity limitations, I have came up with what I consider to be a good alternative. I didn't do it. I'm just messing with you. The musketeers will now shoot one more ray, right in front of them. However, this one will have a maximum length equal to the maximum shooting distance of that musketeer. This ray will have three return values. Minus one if it collides with a friendly soldier, zero if it doesn't collide with anything, and a value of one is returned when the ray collides with an enemy within shooting distance. Now, the agents can still see the enemies from far away, but will know for sure when those agents are locked in their aim, hopefully resulting in more precise shooting since we all know what careless weapon handling can lead to. Useless waste of ammo is a big problem that is not talked about enough. Oh, right, also as a prophylactic measure, I've cranked up the existence punishment as well, so hopefully we will see even more action this time. And before you jump to conclusions thinking I'm some sort of psycho that thinks punishing poor AI is funny, no, that's not the case at all. The reason why I punish the soldiers for their existence is to motivate them to be more active and fight more, since now, the faster they complete the task, aka unalive the entire opponent team, the smaller the existence punishment, hence bigger the total score. Also, it's kinda fun. I have been training 200 agents in parallel, 100 in each team, and Team Red will be consisting of regular musketeers, so the ones you saw in previous episodes, without the new modifications, while Team Blue will consist of Mark II, oh, hi, Mark. musketeers with all the new changes. Initially, both teams were spawned in a random circle known as the Besides terrific dance moves, the Mosh Pit will teach our soldiers the basics of combat. Being spawned in such a close proximity to enemies will increase the chance of hitting one of them when the AI is randomly spamming its options. 
once the agents get the taste of unaliving others, they just keep improving at it. Around iteration 60, when enough red bubbles were spilled, the two teams get separate spawn points. Now the musketeers will have to learn how to actually move and advance towards their opponents. You can see some attempts from Team Blue to flank their enemies from the northern side. Multiple failed attempts were made, until about 30-40 rounds later, on iteration 88, Team Blue actually succeeded at eliminating all the red soldiers, securing the first win since the spawn points were introduced. That being said, Musketeers Mach 2 are currently dominating the battlefield, so I decided to spice the things up a little bit, so from iteration 100, I added 50 more default Musketeers to Team Red. So now we have 100 modified Musketeers training against 150 regular Musketeers. Initially it seemed to make no difference and Team Blue was still cutting through Team Red as hot knife through Orbeez. Ah, the good old YouTube days. Anyways, I left the agents trained for a few dozen iterations more and after a total of 25 training hours, here is the final result. We will have 1000 agents fight each other, 500 in each team. Pause this video right now and let me know in the comments, who do you think is gonna win? Modified soldiers or the regular ones? From the get-go, the modified soldiers in Team Blue showed dominance by pushing forward, while the defeated males of Team Red retreat slowly in shame. The pressure continued and the number of red soldiers kept shrinking until reds seemed to assemble in a line formation and stopped backing up in a brave attempt to hold their positions. Unfortunately, bravery is not enough when your aim is worse than a blind sniper. Soldiers from Team Red were dropping left and right while the blue wave of death was engulfing them one by one. And Till the very last soldier meets his heroic unalivement. Alright, so far so good, but can we continue with this success and improve the warriors as well? I guess only one way to find out. Warriors have the same range of movement and rotation available as the musketeers, however, warriors can also sprint in one direction consuming stamina, and they can block attacks in front of them using their shield, which again consumes stamina. This helps warriors cut distance since they are melee units and need to get close to their opponents before striking. That being said, the suggestion that I kept seeing was to punish warriors for being far from enemies and reward them whenever they are close. Again, I get a Pavlov reflex every time I'm asked to punish the agents more, so let's go! This time the modified soldiers are in the red team, while regular warriors are in team blue. You might be wondering why I decided to switch the teams, and I gotta say that is a good question. Anyways, as always we started the training process with some friendly mosh pit slaughter, but the real fun began around episode 50, when the teams got assigned their spawning points. Once again the Mach 2 soldiers were the ones showing the initiatives and pushing towards the opponent, however they have been met by a strong resistance, not being able to breach enemy lines. It was time to go to bed, so I left them train overnight, but I was not ready for these results. Both teams were rushing each other, fighting in the very middle, hand in hand with their comrades. So after another 25 hours of training, here is the final result. Once again, 1000 brave soldiers will be fighting each other, 500 in each team. However, this time the modified warriors are on the right, in Team Red while Team Blue are regular soldiers that you saw in previous videos. Right off the bat, both armies rush towards each other and collide in the middle in what seems to be the most intense fight we have seen so far. Both teams are holding their line and blocking attacks with their shields and the number of casualties is more or less the same from both teams, with a slight favor for Team Red. It reminds me of that scene from the 300s where the Spartans were holding a similar formation. This is where we hold them! This is where we fight! Stay! We can see on the MVP screen how extreme the fight is by following some of the warriors on the front line. Also, look how close everyone is to their teammates. You can clearly see two rows, one red and one blue fighting for territory. 
It seems like few red soldiers got behind enemy flanks, breaching holes in their defenses and surrounding them in a circle. Just look at these poor blue soldiers being overwhelmed from every side. Just like in real life, the strategy of surrounding your opponent proves to be extremely efficient, Team Red gaining a huge numeric advantage. Despite only about a hundred of them remaining, Blue Warriors are fighting just like lions for their territory. Just look at these dudes, they assembled in a circle formation, being protected from every side. That's why they were able to stay alive so long, however I don't know how much stamina they have left. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Once one of them runs out of stamina and the defense drops, even for a second, just like a house of cards, the entire formation crumbles. There were some fights here and there afterwards, but it was mainly the reds clearing out the remaining of blue army, until there was only one survivor left and something quite… Uh, mythical happened. The Red Warriors started running in a circle around the last enemy in what I like to think was a celebratory dance rather than some sort of AI taunting. <laughs> Weird. Damn, that was amazing and it seems they finally figured out how blocking works. Did you see how long some of them were alive in the epicenter of the battle? Ok, ok, 2 out of 2 successful experiments so far, <laughs> nice. Time for the third and last upgrade, and it was suggested by Athenius. I hope I pronounced your name right. His idea was to give soldiers the possibility to know the rotation of the soldier in front of them, so I did just that. However, instead of a global rotation, now the agent will get a value from 0 to 1 based on the relative rotation of the opponent in front of him. So if the enemy is facing you, the value is gonna be 1, and if it's standing with its back towards you, the value will be 0, and similar for any value in between. Again, as indicated by Athenius in his comment, that should allow agents to make use of fortunate situations, like when an enemy is unaware that you're right behind him with your sword and shift. <laughs> I have been training another 100 agents in each team and made it so there will be 20% medics, 40% warriors and 40% rangers in each team, so we don't get randomly 99 medics or some stuff like that. This training took the longest and after about 50 hours of training, here is the final result. The mayhem started from the very beginning, with Team Red pushing towards the opponents while Team Blue tried to sneak up and flank on the northern side of the map. I must say that the amount of friendly fire is much, much less this time, but still both teams are engaged in a very intense fight, with warriors trying to push and close the distance and the musketeers covering from behind. Even the medics seem to be sticking together with the rest of the team. Both armies keep circling around each other, trying to get to the weaker side of their enemy, however, Team Blue is slightly getting an advantage. The fight kept going all across the map, and the chaos seemed to never end. When the numbers of Red Army dropped, the fight was progressing very slow. I have sped up the process, but basically Team Blue managed to hunt down the remaining survivors and eliminate them until only one Red Fighter remained alive. Unfortunately, that last soldier was a lost medic that could not heal himself nor an alive opponent, so I guess the default fighters won? So that modification failed, hmm, I guess knowing the rotation is not as useful as we thought, huh? But I'm still skeptical about those medics. It still seemed like they weren't doing enough and weren't healing enough, but uh, there was an advice to reward medics for being close to allies while punishing them for being close to enemies. I think that's a good idea and actually might try it the next time I do something like this. Overall, I think we can call this experiment a huge success. Most ideas that we've tried seem to improve the agents in some way, and now I'm wondering only about one thing. Can the new soldiers handle fast zombies? Also, I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for… oh, uh, right, I don't have one. Well, now I do. As some of you might already know, besides YouTube, I still have a full-time job, which means the amount of time I'm able to work on YouTube is very limited. I basically do that in my spare time, and I think Patreon could allow me to get one step closer to hopefully making this my full-time gig sometime in future. So if you want to support me and my content, and also get a shoutout at the end of each video, please check out the Patreon page, link in the description. 
Meanwhile, go check out this video where Chico's tried making $1 million farming. Bye.